Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us. My name is Mark Bierce, and I'm the program director for the Bioidentical Hormone Initiative. I would like to welcome everybody to today's live interactive educational webinar on HCG and the HRT practice. We have a great turnout for today's webinar with over 150 physicians registering to join us from across the country. This webinar is brought to you by the Bioidentical Hormone Initiative. BHI is a community of physicians dedicated to the treatment of age-related endocrine dysfunction with bioidentical hormones and other evidence-based integrative therapies to improve quality of life, prevent chronic disease, and obtain optimal health. Today's webinar is the first in an ongoing series. It will be followed in August by Dr. Kent Holtorf presenting on emerging concepts in the diagnosis and treatment of hyperthyroidism. If you would like to receive notification of future webinars as well as other BHI events and educational programs, please register at our website, www.bioidenticalhormoneinitiative.org. I would also like to take a moment to mention that we are very excited to announce the first annual BHI symposium on September 17th and 18th in Madison, Wisconsin. The subject of the symposium is evidence-based approaches to age management growing a successful BHRT practice. This one and one half day event will cover basic science, current research, and extensive clinical application of female and male hormone replacement therapies and other evidence-based integrative therapies for the treatment of the symptoms of hormone imbalance. Our list of prominent experts will include Dr. Erica Schwartz, Dr. David Brownstein, Dr. Joseph Raphael, and Randy Mann. For further information about the event schedule or to register to attend, please visit our website. Attendance will be capped at 50 physicians, so we encourage you to register while space is still available. Today's webinar will run approximately 60 minutes. If you're unable to stay on for the duration of the webinar, it will be available for viewing on the BHI website. We'll devote the last 15 to 20 minutes of the webinar to answering questions from our audience. You can submit a question at any time during the webinar by typing it into the question box in your webinar control panel. Today's presenter is Dr. Erica Schwartz. Dr. Schwartz is founding director of the Bioidentical Hormone Initiative, chief medical officer of agemd.org, and a member of the board of managers and trustees of the SUNY Downstate College of Medicine. Dr. Schwartz is a leading expert in the field of bioidentical hormones, patient advocacy, and true disease prevention. Dr. Schwartz is also the author of four best-selling books. She's been bylined in the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and is a recognized international speaker and television personality. So without further ado, I will turn things over to Dr. Schwartz. Thank you, Mark, and thank you everybody for joining us. Um, I'm very excited for our first webinar. I've done a lot of webinars for everybody else, and now I'm really excited about BHI becoming the leading educational venue via webinars as well. <clears throat> as you know, there's a lot going on with HCG, and um, HCG is now a very well-known, well-debated, confusing, not very clear or very comfortable for most physicians um, diet because there's so much controversy surrounding it. And how I usually find myself in the middle of controversy, but at the end of it I want to remind you things always turn out to be right because I started with uh, bioidentical hormones about 16 years ago and everybody thought that they weren't okay and I just returned from the International Menopause Society um, annual congress, I triannual congress in uh, Rome and where we came back with is that the conventional medical community unequivocally thinks that all women should be on hormones, the earlier the better, and there is no class effect, meaning that not all estrogens are created equal, and 17 beta estradiol, as in bioidentical hormones, are safer and more efficacious. So without further ado, I'd like to tell you about what I know about HCG, what my literature review has done to bring us the information about HCG, what our clinical experience with HCG is, and I will be very happy to answer your questions at the end, and also come to Bioidentical Hormone Initiative to our website, ask questions. You know we do um, 
preceptorships, physicians come and visit with us, we train physicians, we want to create a new generation of physicians who actually cares about the patient and wants to provide the patient with the best and safest modalities to keep them young and healthy forever. And we're ready to go. Mark will give us the slides because somehow we're not really that great at webinars yet. <laughs> anyway, HCG, and I don't want to bore you, I'm going to do some science because we do need science is a glycoprotein hormone with 244 amino acids. It is heterodimeric, and I don't know how many of you remember from medical school, but that means it's got multiple chains with an alpha subunit identical to FSH, LH, and TSH, which is important to know when you're doing blood tests which measure FSH, LH, and TSH, so you got to measure a specific subunit. It is produced primarily during pregnancy, by the embryo initially and later by the placenta, the synthiotrophoblast part of the placenta. It's also produced in the pituitary of both males and females at all ages. Yet again, another way to prove that males and females are not that far apart. Next slide, please. The function of the HCG molecule in general is to maintain the corpus luteum at the beginning of pregnancy causing progesterone secretion which is why its main function, its FDA-approved function, is to be used in infertility so as to maintain the corpus luteum and to increase progesterone secretion, thus maintaining and supporting the implantation of the fetus of the embryo into the um, endometrium. Similar to LH and HCH induces ovulation in females and increases testosterone production in males in their testes which is why HCG is very often used by integrative physicians, myself included, um, to increase testosterone production in men with wonderful results. Low dose once a week, but this is not what we're going to talk about today. It's also used in infertility treatments, and that's the FDA-approved usage for the HCG, as I mentioned before. And it also may activate apoptosis, which means as you all know, programmed cell death, as in anti-cancer effect. Below, you have the HCG molecule as it looks um, from the biochemistry standpoint, and as you will never use it in your practice, but it's important to see because that gives us scientific information. Next slide, please. Um, HCG can be produced, it, it, it is extracted in order to be used in the medical practice from the urine of pregnant women or by genetic modifi modification, both of them being pharmaceutical methods of extraction of HCG. <clears throat> Excuse me. For example, Pregnil, which is one of the forms of HCG that we use, is derived from urine, whereas Ovidrel, which is another product, comes from recombinant DNA, so that's the genetic modification. But at the end of the day, they come either HCG that you buy or that you inject your patients with, either comes from the urine of pregnant women or directly from the placenta, from the synthiotrophoblastic cell layer of the placenta. So it is bioidentical, meaning that the HCG used in any kind of practice is HCG that looks identical to the HCG manufactured by the human female, and male probably, but you, female. Um, next slide, please. The HCG diet, where did this come from? It started in the 1950s with this British endocrinologist by the name of Dr. Simmons, Simeons, who published a book called Pounds and Inches, who in his research on um, pregnant women in India who were on calorie deficient diets and fat boys with pituitary problems, Froelich syndrome, for those of you who know what that means, um, were always losing weight, but they were losing the weight specifically by eliminating the fat, the adipose tissue, rather than losing the muscle. So Dr. Simeon's concluded that HCG may program the hypothalamus by mobilizing and consuming 
excessive adipose deposits. He introduced the diet into a weight loss program in 1954, and it is used to this day. Um, the interesting thing is that in the 1980s, when I was practicing internal medicine, um, I had read about the HCG diet, but there wasn't enough information about how to combine the diet with a real diet and the HCG, um, the HCG dosage. So I did have quite a number of women who we injected with HCG and put them on a limited calorie diet but did not follow Dr. Simeon's diet because it seemed rather difficult. And they did lose weight um, and they had no side effects, which is very interesting because now we're focusing on this diet in a very different way, but a more scientific way. And it's interesting that there is nowhere in the scientific literature that there are any negative side effects reported from the addition of HCG to a low calorie diet. Next, please. The HCG diet suggests appetite suppression while helping the body lose fat without lean muscle, as I was mentioning. Um, in order to achieve that, and now what I'm going to start bringing to you before I get to the scientific literature is, no, no, back to that, stay there, um, is that it's a very simple way of doing it. There are no mystery to it. There's a way to do it that is right, and there's a way to do it that will not give you the right results. What I will give you is what we have found in our practice and in the practice of other physicians and the scientific literature, which works. So the first day, two days are the loading days in which the patient eats as many high-fat foods as possible, um, unlimited basically. Then there is the weight loss um, from the diet, which it, once they start the diet, which is two days after the loading, um, during the loading they do take the HCG and we'll explain it a little bit further. Um, the weight loss expected is between 0.5 to 2 pounds daily, and we've seen numerous people, I mean all of our patients actually do very, very well, and I'll get to that when we get to the clinical. One round of the diet is either 20 or 40 days of injections, and you'll see that there are days when they don't get the injections. And the rest period between the diet should be between three and six weeks, um, and the number of rounds that people can go on has not been really scientifically determined, but there's never been any issue of safety associated. And next, please. Well, what do we expect and what have we found? That the HCG diet may help lower cholesterol and blood glucose levels. And if you think about it, if people are losing weight, obviously, they're going to lose their cholesterol levels going to drop and their blood sugar level will drop. So there's clearly the benefit is you lose weight, whether you use it with HCG or not, you're going to accomplish this. The interesting thing is that we found, and the science supports it, that it reduces the appearance of cellulite, which is atypical of most diets that involve massive weight loss of the likes of 500 calorie diets. Usually people have severe cellulite and women wind up having to really have surgery, liposuction, and no matter what they do, they wind up with cellulite, which detracts from the diet itself. It also may eliminate food cravings, which is one of the problems of the drawbacks of diets in general, that once you stop the diet, people start coming back to having food cravings. And I think it's very interesting that when we analyze that, we will see that the reasons are pretty much two. One, that the HCG does indeed kind of quelch the food cravings, but it's also about maintaining proper hormone balance associated at the same time with the HCG diet, which is what we do here. It increases energy levels. Of course, as you lose weight, if you don't become ketotic, because most diets that are low calorie diets, you become ketotic and your energy levels drop. In the case of the HCG diet, you do not become ketotic in spite of the low calorie. Um, and your energy levels actually soar. But that's the other place where a diet makes your energy levels soar is when you're taking, you know, fentramine, tenuate, and all those um, metabolic speeder, speed, basically. Uh, unfortunately, the dangers associated with those drugs outweigh the benefits of those drugs. 
not the case with the HCG diet. It decreases blood pressure. Of course, it may decrease blood pressure because as you lose weight, people with high blood pressure, their blood pressure starts coming down to normal. It may improve skin elasticity. And I can tell you firsthand that looking at our nurse, who's been one of the first people who did the HCG diet with us, who lost more than 70 pounds, um, her skin elasticity is amazing. Amazing. She looks like her skin is like a skin of a 30-year-old. The same thing goes for all our patients. There are no negative side effects. Um, and we will continue now. Next. So what are the questions about, what is the controversy surrounding the HCG diet? Well, the controversy, and it's kind of a ridiculous controversy, is about blood clots, cancer, it's being ineffective, and the weight, gain, weight loss being regained as soon as the diet is discontinued. Um, the thing is that I will address these um, individually from the scientific perspective. Um, and there is really, there should not be any controversy. The other piece that should be here is the mode of administration, which is really very important because if you go to the internet, you're going to see a ton of oral sublingual drops, um, HCG diets that are actually selling millions and millions of dollars a day because of the desperation of the American public, but unfortunately, they don't work. So. I will explain to you why HCG, like most hormones, do not work um, the right way unless they're administered the right way. They have to get into your system, and sublingual does that. Next, please. Um, I've chosen a couple of scientific um, literature pieces so as not to bore you, but to give you an overview of what the science surrounding the HCG diet is because there is a moderate to mild amount of science. So this is the first, the, an interesting um, study, which was in German, from 1987. And um, they refer to the HCG diet as the cura romana, which is close to me, Roman cure. So of course it must be curative if it's Roman. And they reviewed, it was a very good review of the 20 studies. And 10 of the, the studies that they reviewed showed positive results with HCG, while 10 showed negative results with regard to HCG-related weight reduction. Two of the studies with the positive results were what we consider in the scientific uh, verbiage double-blind studies, which were, uh, had enough weight behind them to represent significant, uh, statistically significant results. And um, most of them were the reports on therapeutic experiences were not controlled studies. But according to the, all these entire 10 studies, um, the reports, and there was enough weight behind them. They had enough, they were powered enough, especially the double blind ones. Um, the body proportions normalized and the feeling of hunger was tolerable, which is something any of you and your patients who have ever been on a diet know that if you're going to put somebody on a 500 calorie diet, they're going to be starving. Um, and they're going to become ketotic and they're not going to like you or themselves very much. Um, four out of the 10 studies with negative side results were controlled studies. Um, so there are more controlled studies in the negative. Um, and the issue there was that there were no negative side effects whatsoever. It was an issue of whether they really accomplished anything. So let's go on to the next one. Um, this study from 1977, and it's sad because the studies are so old and the review of the literature just shows how very little is, has been done by the, formal, by the medical community, the research community, to help us, the clinicians, provide better care for our patients. Um, this study basically um, it showed that they were using injections of HCG um, claiming to aid in weight reduction by reducing hunger and affecting mood as well as localized spot, spot fat reduction. And the claims tested in a double-blind placebo randomized trial 
uh, used HCG injections versus placebo, the weight loss was identical between the two groups, and there was no evidence for any differential effects on hunger, mood, or localized body measurements. So the placebo injections in this case, in this study, appeared to be as effective as HCG in the treatment of obesity. The interesting thing and why I use the study is um, that there are no negative side effects reported with HCG. And actually, I don't know if any of you just read The Lancet, um, and this has nothing to do with HCG and dieting, but a, a huge study just came out in Lancet from England on the use of antidepressants in women with Alzheimer's, um, early Alzheimer's and dementia. And these studies basically using antidepressants demonstrated that the, dem the antidepressants did not fare any better than the placebo, but had horrible side effects. So if you're looking at this in the same context, um, what this study is showing is the worst that could happen is that it's just as, as, as important, let's say, as placebo, just as effective as placebo, and it has no side effects, no negative side effects. Next one, please. Um, this is in 1994, so at least we're moving closer to this um, century. Um, and this is a animal study, and this is a, toward a physiological approach to breast cancer prevention. And it brings me to the issue that was raised about the danger, and I put that in quotation marks basically, that the danger of using HCG um, because it may cause breast cancer. First of all, women who are pregnant who have a lot more HCG in their system than women who um, aren't pregnant um, do not have a higher incidence of breast cancer. Giving a very low dose of HCG, which is what we do for three to, to five weeks, certainly doesn't even come close to the data that pregnant women bring to us. But here was a study that um, looked at the induction of mammary tumors in a rat model, demonstrating HCG actually reduced tumor incidence similar to completed pregnancy. So the researchers proposed that young, nulliparous women would reduce their breast cancer risk if they were taking HCG treatment. Next, please. In another study, and another case control study actually, from 1995, um, that can, again looks at um, the treatment of HCG with HCG and the risk of breast cancer, a case control study of breast cancer in 744 women ages 40 or less, newly diagnosed, surveyed on prior use of HCG for weight loss or infertility treatment, and the odds ratio were point 77, 95%, with a confidence index of 0 0.5 to 1.1, which basically, in translation, suggests that HCG may be a means of reducing breast cancer risk rather than increasing it. This is a well-powered study, it's a well-designed study, and it's a very interesting study. The other thing that's very interesting about this study, which is why I picked it for you, is that these women, the risk was significantly reduced in women with maximum non-pregnant BMIs of less than 27.5, which basically in translation says, the thinner the woman, the less likely she is to have breast cancer. And also giving her HCG will further reduce the breast cancer risk. Next, please. Here's another study from back to 73, and this one looks at weight loss, hunger, and feeling of weight well-being associated with um, HCG. They looked at 20 female patients, which obviously is not a very significant, statistically significant number, but unfortunately, as I said to you, we did an extensive review of the literature, and this is the best we could find. Um, these patients were on a 500 to 550 calorie diet receiving 125 units of HCG compared with 20 on the same diet receiving placebo. And we use more than 125, and we'll tell you in a second. 
ATG group lost significantly more mean weight, 6.8 pounds, and had a higher percentage of positive responses, including little or no hunger and feeling good to excellent as compared to the placebo group. You know, we could probably publish our own at this point because we have much, many more than 20 people, but this is a very good sample of what's really going on when you work with HCG and a low-calorie diet. Next, please. Um, the American, okay, so this is, I, I think this is really about as far as we should go because we don't have enough time. And I think that I kind of put to rest the idea that HCG increases the risk of breast cancer, not one scientific article to support that. Um, that HCG uh, has negative side effects, not one shred of evidence to that. Um, the worst that could be is that HCG doesn't really do anything more than placebo. And as we know, placebo is a very powerful medical treatment. So let's look a little bit at diet for a second while I get into the clinical part. And let's pay attention to the fact that according to the American Journal of Physiology, Endocrinology, and Metabolism, 25 days of dieting reduced the T4 to T3 conversion by 50%. And chronic dieting dramatically lowers metabolism, the metabolic rate, that stays depressed even after resuming normal food intake, which translates in why people gain the weight back as soon as they get off the diet. The dramatic reduction in tissue T3 level and obviously increase in reverse T3 that results slowing down of metabolism is not detected by any of the standard blood tests and as such leaves you, the physician, in a quandary about why your patients are gaining weight and why diets are so unsuccessful and why you have to do something if you want to actually keep your patient happy. And diets in general without the support of everything else will not work. Uh, next, please. So what happens to chronic dieters? Because most of the patients that we see are chronic dieters unless they're 17-year-olds or 15-year-olds who haven't started. Uh, we live in a society and a culture where dieting is de rigueur and the diet du jour is really what everybody is looking for. Unfortunately, we should be actually looking for how to permanently help people lose weight because it will affect their health for the rest of their lives. Um, chronic dieters have a reduced pace of metabolic rate and that's consistent in all, in all chronic dieters. 20 to 40 percent have a lower metabolic rate than expected for their BMI. And we see it every day in our practice because we do uh, biomarkers and we measure everybody's bo um, body mass index and we also uh, base on metabolic rates. You need a 500 or 1,000 less calories per day or burn that many calories to just stay even and not gain weight. So to begin with, we're in a quandary because our diets are so difficult to keep balanced. Diet and exercise are important components of successful weight loss, but they do not achieve the long-term success if metabolic and hormonal abnormalities are not addressed. Next, please. So what have we learned in our practice? Well, in our practice, we've learned that you know, patients come to us primarily because they want to lose weight in the context of having their hormones balanced and really being ready to improve their life, make a long-term commitment, actually a permanent commitment, whether they're 18-year-olds or 60-year-olds, to really improving their lives, staying healthy, and staying out of the conventional testing, drug-oriented, disease-oriented, disease-focused, system. So what do we do? We do a history and a comprehensive evaluation because we're conventional doctors. We do bloods. We look at all their hormones, liver function tests, pituitary, adrenal. We do the biomarkers, which I meant to tell you before, um, which include measuring their skin age, their uh, cardiovascular age, um, their pulmonary age, and seeing where they qualify as far, where they actually sit at the beginning. And we do 
um, their basal metabolic rate and their basal temperature, which actually are probably better ways to determine what their thyroid function tests are like than the bloods that we're using today, which is really a huge problem in the treatment of patients um, trying to, to balance their hormones and making them feel better. Next, please. First, we address all hormone issues. We balance the thyroid. We balance estradiol, progesterone, testosterone. We address their adrenal status. We address their emotional factors and their personal factors. We actually go into detail on the history of dieting, the aftermath of dieting, the history of the yo-yo syndrome of dieting, and how much they exercise. We look at the entire patient. We don't sell them an HCG diet. We use HCG as part of the armamentarium of balancing hormones and making them healthy. Next. As of July 1, 2011, we have um, done the HCG diet with 125 patients since we started last year. We have a follow-up up to 12 months on the HCG only patients, but if you look at these patients, most of them have been with us between three and five years. Uh, we have a retention rate of about 90% of the year. Our resulting weight loss is between 20 and 70 pounds. We have 117 women and eight men who have gone through the program and are still our patients, obviously. Next. Our pro protocols that I recommend that you use if you would like to work with HCG or come talk to me, you know, email us, we'll be happy to help. Um, because they're so successful, involve two days of loading that we were telling you that means like French fries, ice cream, whatever patients want to do. It's kind of like the end of it. And when I wrote the 30-day natural hormone plan, even when I did that, which was about balancing your hormones, I started with the two loading days, which was kind of the goodbye to bad foods that kill you followed by a fat burning stage, which is either 20 or 40 days of injections, which is based on um, the individual patient's need, um, the results of the evaluations, and the discretion of the consensus between the physician or nurse who's working with the patient and the patient. I mean, you know, we do have people who come in and want to lose five pounds, and we tell them, well, the hormone-friendly diet is good enough for that. More um, cardio is enough for that. Um, quitting eating foods that are bad for you and not sleeping or stressing over things, you know, getting your hormones in balance, that'll help you too. The fat burning stage in the patients who actually need the diet, and we usually say at least 20 pounds they need to lose, is between 20 and 40 days. It's a 500 calorie a day diet, but I must tell you that some of the time some of the patients have gone up to 550 to 600 to even 700 calories with excellent results. Three day plus, you stay another three days after the discontinuation of the HCG on the diet. And then we reintroduce a normal diet, which by, from our practice and our institute's um, perspective is the hormone-friendly diet, which you can find on my website, dreerica.com, or we can send to you if you would like to. Um, but this is like the most important piece, which is never or omit the hormone balance portion. And that's why we think we are sure, actually, that the reason we're so successful with the HCG diet is because we're not just doing HCG. We're doing an entire patient. We balance the patient's hormones, and then we teach the patient how to eat right, and we address how to exercise, and we address the entire patient's um, life. Next, please. The dosages that we use and the method of administration are 180 units of HCG subcutaneous, six out of seven days a week for 20 to 40 injections. And we do not believe in any sublingual or other method of administration because it doesn't get absorbed. We teach the patients how to do it themselves so the patient doesn't have to come to our office we are not there to make money off the patient. We're there to help, help the patient do well, take care of themselves, raise awareness, and be very successful. Next, please. 
Um, in order to follow the protocols, we have found that the, it's very important for the patient to keep a journal, which we provide from the office. Um, we've noted also that the weight gain occurs only if there are errors in the protocol. That's why we follow the patients closely. They talk to the nurse at least once a week. They communicate via email and in person every two weeks. Uh, we make sure the patients make sure the patient doesn't need any fats or salt. We also recommend the skin care that they need to use because they're hidden fats in a lot of um, our life. And so it's a lot of education that goes on and the patients learn and the education really stays forever. We teach patients, um, you know, we address their food allergies and oftentimes we discover that people have severe food allergies they don't even know about which kind of affect their ability to lose weight with other diets. We prevent dehydration and we teach the patients what kind of fluids to drink, how often, and how to stay hydrated and how to define hydration by making sure that they urinate every couple of hours, the color of their urine is pale, patient, basically teaching the patients to understand themselves and really use the HCG diet as a springboard for a healthy life forever. Um, we take care with the foods that contain, as I said, hidden sugars or fats. Um, during periods, when the women have their periods, during menstruation, women do not take the HCG shots but continue the diet. The exercise that, that, that occurs that we encourage them to do during the active HCG diet is limited to walking and mild swimming 30 to 45 minutes three times a week and then when they're done we encourage them to start really doing strengthening exercises and um, they, they won't need the cardio as much but that what they will need is strengthening so as the flexibility so as to really have a great body that they've been looking for um, and have been unable to do with other diets next please Um, in addition, we give patients supplements. One of the issues that we find with people that do the HCG diet is that because it's so low in fat and you're really taking out the fat, people become constipated. Constipation is one of, it's probably the only issue that we address, that we need to address in order to prevent patients from suffering with constipation. Um, even though they're well hydrated, we give them probiotics, chelated magnesium, and I specify chelated magnesium, about 750 milligrams at night and 750 in the morning. Chelated is really the only formulation that actually helps um, better than citrated magnesium citrate because it's less irritating and people don't get cramps with it. We give them the eight specific supplements which we've developed through the HMD um, men's and women's pack. Uh, we Definitely they have to avoid the omega-3s or any other fatty acid containing supplements because again, they contain fat. We only, they can only use mineral oil as a fat. And skin uh, products that we recommend um, that uh, have specific low, no fat in them, no oils in them, all free um, specifics. Next please. We, as I said, we troubleshoot is constipation. I go address that. Uh, plateau, patient stops losing weight and they're following the protocol and we've been in touch with them and we know exactly what's going on. We'll just give them a day of apples. And you know what? A day of apples in the bigger sphere is okay. Um, loss of motivation, I got to tell you, it never happens because the motivation comes from the fact that people feel good and they see results. And the results are amazing. They're not speedy because they're not taking drugs. Um, they're not on a restricted diet alone without the support of a of hormone balance, the hormone that actually does curb their appetite and makes them feel good. So we have not encountered loss of motivation. When people discontinue it, it's usually because they either go on vacation or they have a business meeting or something, but then invariably they come back and we start it and finish off literally, once they cross the finish line, they're at least at 25 to 30 pounds. 
none of the above have caused patients to permanently discontinue diet because there are no negative side effects. And it's a very low calorie diet that you can actually do with the, with the help of the HCG. Next, please. Now, what do I think as a physician and what do we think from our perspective? We always believe the studies are useful. Extensive evaluation of the HCG diet is necessary using larger study groups and study on long-term effects. There is no literature providing HCG diet, proving that HCG diet has any detrimental effects on a patient, none whatsoever. There, the largest contributing factor to a patient not successfully losing weight is the patient's noncompliance. The HCG diet should only be administered by medical professionals. I can't stress that enough. We're all looking for a quick fix. We're all looking to lose weight and feel great. We're all looking to save money while we're doing it. It's about your health. It's about your patient's health. And you as physicians want your patients to be healthy. That's why you're here. Scaring people or giving them drugs that we know have horrible side effects is not an option. Looking at science and doing scientific research that uses double-blind, placebo-controlled studies, comparing on a large scale HCG versus placebo is a very good way of determining how extensive the use of HCG should be. Right now, it's very extensive. Sublingual, which doesn't work. And we're watching a major growth in our practice because of the balancing of the hormones that we're doing so the patients really do well and stay well. Um, the point is that science and scientific research lags behind the clinical practice, unfortunately, by decade at least. So you need to figure out if you want to do this in your practice, and if you do, how to do it with the help of your, phys or of your patients and with our support, we'll be very happy to help you any way we can. Um, it's all for medical professionals and you want to encourage your patients to trust you, not go outside and get some, someone who really doesn't know how to do it. Next, please. Next. We're done. Um, I kind of wanted to, I covered this as quickly as I could. The research we've done basically shows there is no downside to the HCG diet. The worst that it could be is that it's not any better than um, placebo. In our practice, we find that that's not the truth, that with placebo, you're actually going to be starving and you, the uh, compliance will be much less. Our patients lose weight and, and keep the weight off because we do it as an integrated program. We do it only injectable. We teach the patients to do it so they don't come back to us. We don't make money off of the patient coming in and getting shots. Uh, we teach the patient awareness and our patients are healthy. And I'm here to answer questions because I would like to help you make sure that your patients are healthy and that you avail yourself of the newest and best ways of doing so through the help of the Bioidentical Hormone Initiative, which is a not-for-profit organization, and we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Schwartz. We have about 15 minutes remaining in the time that we allotted for today's webinar. Uh, if you go to the webinar control panel, you'll find a, a section where you can enter questions. And uh, so if Dr. Schwartz is willing to stick around for a few more minutes, um, we can give some of those questions to her. Uh, if after the webinar is over you have some additional questions, I would like to encourage you to visit the uh, BHI website. Uh, we've recently added a forum area uh, to the website, and the BHI forum on HCG would be an excellent place to sort of extend and enliven the discussion a a around this topic. Um, so while you guys uh, start writing in your questions for the next few minutes, uh, I'll pose the first couple that we've received to Dr. Schwartz. Dr. Schwartz, the, the first question comes from Jerry Jensen who asks, where can we obtain additional information and training on balancing hormones, testing, uh, and the like? Uh, would really appreciate more detail. 
As to how to get the uh, training, well, we do a lot of training for physicians. Um, all they have to do, Jerry, thank you so much for attending. All we need is for you to connect with the Bioidentical Hormone Initiative, and uh, I am sure that you will be directed. We do preceptorships in our New York office, as, as well as a few other of the um, members of, um, founding members of DHI. Um, trained physicians. Um, we do uh, webinars, seminars. Um, I think we have the September. We have a lot going on. And yes, just connect with one of us and we'll be very happy to give you information, training, anything you need so that we can move forward and help you create a practice that provides you with the answers you need for the patients that you see. Uh, Dr. Schwartz, Paul Magarelli asks, who does better on this diet, men or women? Uh, thank you for the question, Paul. Um, interestingly enough, you saw, as much as I would love to say that I know the answer to that, we are kind of skewed because we have mostly women that come in. While in the overall practice at the, at the Age Management Institute in New York City, we see about 30 percent men and 70 percent women, we do not promote to men a lot. Uh, they're just brought in basically by their wives and girlfriends, significant others. Um, but the results with men are always better and faster than with women. Um, I just saw yesterday a couple who has been, both of them have been our patients in the, our concierge program for over a year and um, about four months ago for their anniversary, they decided they needed to lose 20 pounds, both of them, and they went on the HCG diet as a couple, and um, our nurse, Joanne Delabovi, supervised them. They did really beautifully, both of them. He lost the 20 pounds in about two weeks, <laughs> maybe in three weeks. She, it took her the whole course, about 40 days. They're both very happy, but in, as usual, men are more likely to lose weight than women, and the added bonus was that he's about 50 years old, his, um, his testosterone level went up, and their sex drive and their sex life picked up a lot. And that's another reason why I would never reveal their names. <laughs> but yeah, I think in general, we know men lose weight easier than women. Dr. Schwartz, Barbara Stewart asks, uh, is HCG treatment covered by insurance? And what is the cost of the treatment without insurance? Well, I don't think the HCG treatment um, diet is covered by insurance because, in general, insurance does not cover diets. Um, insurance does not cover diet pills. Insurance doesn't cover any kind of diets. And that's something that we've been trying to uh, work with insurance companies to help them understand that people who are thinner, who lose weight, have lower incidence of chronic illnesses, and it would be wise to cover it. But what they do cover is the visits. They cover the um, endocrinological part of what we're doing, which is the hormone balance. So when patients come in and are senior, um, we give the patients their insurance form, and most of the time they get up to 80% of um, what the uh, charges are. Um, the HCG diet itself is um, about $300, give or take, don't hold me to it, because I'm not the financial part of it. And then there is the biomarkers that's additional to it, and it's the medical supervision part which is additional to it. And overall, I would say it runs, um, I'm talking about the, you could do the 20 day or the 40 day. So. Um, overall, it runs between about between 700 and I, I want to say 1,000 or 1,200 for the entire program. And actually, um, if somebody calls our office and says they've listened to this particular webinar, I think that there is a discount that the office is offering. Thank you, Dr. Schwartz. Kenneth Storch would like to know why it's important not to give fat calories during the HCG diet. Well, the reason is because you're really trying 
to get rid of the fat that you have. So if you're putting in fat from the outside, uh, what the HCG will do and the diet will do is really get rid of the fat you're putting in. If you're removing any outside source of fat, what's going to happen is that, as I said at the beginning slides, the hypothalamus is really reset with the help of the HCG to eliminate the fat that's in your body in a spot reduction kind of thing. So if you basically get like uh, have a spare tire as a way to where you gain your weight, that spare tire is the first thing that's going to go, not your muscle. You're not going to look gaunt like you do on a lot of low-fat diets, but rather you're going to look really glowing because think about pregnant women. And what happens is like if you get, let's say, your hips are larger, that's where you're going to lose the weight. You lose it from the areas where it's usually where the fat deposits are. So you don't want to put in fat because you don't want to detract what the job of the HCG is, which is to get rid of your fat, not outside fat. Afreen Papa asks, how do you manage nutritional status in HCG patients? Uh, she mentions that she's seen women come in with significant hair loss, breakage of nails, and abnormal IFTs after being on HCG that they either did with another medical doctor or that they did after purchasing sublingual drops online? I think that's a great question. I'm so happy to hear that question because, first of all, the breakage of nails, the hair loss, first thing you think about is any kind of thyroid issue. And this is why I was addressing people who, who go on diets, who lose weight, who do unsupervised diets, will throw off their whole metabolic system. And the, as I was talking about, the, tra the um, transformation, the, the, the T4 to T3 decreases, and the moment T4 to T3 goes down, what happens is you start losing your hair, your nails start falling, you're getting cracked. You have all these symptoms, which are really symptoms of hormone imbalance, which are symptoms of hypothyroidism that would never be diagnosed because if you did a TSH, the TSH would look fine. So the, that's why we do an, an entire evaluation of the hormone status and biomarkers before we start HCG so our patients never get into this problem. The other thing is that you evaluate the nutritional status by making sure that you're giving them the right supplements. You're giving them the right supplements by we use the HMD women's and men's supplements. You use the probiotics, so whatever they're eating gets absorbed. You use the digestive enzymes, so you encourage digestion, you encourage bile production and good gastric emptying. You also give them the um, hydration and the well-balanced diet. I didn't discuss, I didn't go into the details of the 500 calorie diet, but it is an extremely well-balanced diet with the exception of fats. The only thing that's missing in that diet is really starches, fats, things that would make you fat, basically. But it is fruit, it's vegetables, it is protein. Charity Hester would like to know why the injectable form of H GC, HCG is the most bioavailable. Bio uh, because the oral gets digested in the stomach and never arrives in the bloodstream where it's supposed to be. The, the same way as HGH cannot be given orally, the same way as oral testosterone doesn't work, um, HCG is another hormone that gets broken down in the stomach, in the ileum, and actually never makes it to the bloodstream, which is why it needs to be injected. Um, do you change the dose of HCG through a patient's protocol, and are there specific guidelines for doing this? Sometimes you do depending on the patient, depending on the size of the patient, depending on, you know, man, men or women, and depending on the weight loss that you see during um, the program. But the reason I gave 180 units is because 90% of the time, 90% of the people do very well with um, 180 units. 
We may go up a little bit or go down a little bit. But in general, 180 is a good starting point. The other thing is, once you start doing it and you start working with a num you, with significant number of patients, you will know, you know, how to adjust it. And it becomes, again, it's a matter of experience. And again, it's the issue of the scientific literature versus the clinical practice. And nothing trumps the clinical practice. Dr. Schwartz, a number of our attendees have asked whether whether uh, women starting the diet should be tested for pregnancy prior. Absolutely. If women um, who are menstruating and are in childbearing age, of childbearing age, should either have a period right as you, when you start the diet, like start the HCG diet as they have a period, or be tested for um, pregnancy. Um, I'd like to... But wait, one second. Mark, Mark, one second. The only other thing I wanted to tell you is that should there be an oversight which happens that someone gets started on HCG and they're pregnant, there is no downside because the woman is making HCG anyway. The amount of HCG that she makes is a lot higher than the dose that you're giving her and it will never affect the pregnancy negatively. Thank you very much, Dr. Schwartz. We've run out of time. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody that attended today. Before you go, uh, a couple of comments. If you're interested in continuing the discussion about HCG, uh, I encourage you to go to our website, www.bioidenticalhormoneinitiative.org. There you will find a, a forums section that allows registered members to ask questions and answer questions of one another. And I'm sure that Dr. Schwartz will be checking up on that forum um, to see if she can help any of you with additional questions. I also want to remind you that we will be having this webinar event regularly, uh, at least once a month going forward. And you can find out more information about upcoming sessions, again, by going to our website and registering. Uh, once you've registered, you'll receive a monthly newsletter uh, that updates you to our events, our activities, and uh, the educational programs that the initiative is offering. So thank you, and have a very good afternoon. We'll see you all hopefully next month. The